while he's building that particular crescendo, you kind of know this one's going to end someplace different, someplace shocking. Um, and then it does. There's something autobiographical about this. There's something autobiographical, it seems, about almost anything Mahler wrote. Right, and his wife, Alma, was sort of like, what are you doing? Why are you writing a piece about the hero getting felled by three hammer blows? Oh, he takes a blow, and oh, he takes a second blow, and the third blow ends him. It just gives the last movement a certain characteristic of fate and foreboding that then casts its pall over the entire symphony. Well, the great thing about being a percussionist is that we're often asked to play instruments that don't exist. And this instrument, the Mahler hammer, does not exist in a music store. Uh, you cannot purchase a Mahler hammer. You can rent one, but it's much more fun to me to build. The box is heavy, yes. Uh, the box is around, I'd say, 130, 140 pounds and the hammer itself is only around 15 pounds. Um, this old railroad tie uh, is, a, is really dense and it added a lot of weight to the implement, but um, it's really created an amazing sound and an amazing force that I'm excited to share. It's this sort of cataclysmic, just stifling, soul-shattering sound that comes. The scariest thing about playing this particular instrument is that the timing has to be exact. This one being as visual as it is, there's really no hiding. So when you bring the hammer up, it's time to go. And, and then when you see the guy wind up for the big swing and it comes down, it's like, wow. You know, it's breathtaking moments.